Throughout history, prominent figures always had someone working against them, either openly or subtly. A lot of times, it appears as if they were on the same side. The American Revolutionary War was no exception, as Horatio Gates denied leading the Conway Cabal, a plot to have George Washington replaced with himself, and Pierre Landes flagrantly ignored orders from John Paul Jones. To many Americans, the name Pierre Landes does not mean much, but he caught the wrath of John Paul Jones and Continental Congress as they questioned his sanity. It is also rumored that Landes was also the role model, the original Commander Quig, of the Cain Mutiny fame. Landes was born in France. In school, he showed a remarkable aptitude in math. He joined the French Navy at an early age and rose through the ranks with visions of grandeur and making his mark in history. When the American Revolution began, he saw his chance and resigned from the French Navy, taking a captaincy in the Continental Navy. He was placed in command of the Alliance, a 36-gun frigate that had been recently built and was considered the best ship in the Continental Navy. His first task was to transport Lafayette back to France to petition the French for more aid in the American War for Independence. He was supposed to load with munitions and head back to America, but Benjamin Franklin ordered him to join a squadron commanded by John Paul Jones. Landais was jealous of Jones, as he felt that Jones was overshadowing him and getting too much credit. During a mission to escort merchant ships, the Alliance collided with the Bonham Richard, creating slight damage to the rigging of both ships. The two blamed each other for the accident. Another incident between the two was when Jones ordered Landais not to pursue another ship into shallow waters. The next day, Landais boarded the Bonham Richard and insulted Jones. It was shortly after this that Landais began to ignore orders and do whatever he pleased. In an act of defiance, the Alliance would leave the squad without permission and then rejoin it several hours later. If Jones tried to signal the Alliance, there would be no answer, as Landais was now refusing to recognize Jones' authority. The squadron had taken two British warships as prizes off the coast of Scotland. Jones made Landais responsible for them, and Landais gave them to the Danish government, who then gave them back to the British. On the 23rd of September, 1779, Jones' squadron came across a convoy of British merchant ships, being guarded by Her Majesty's ship Serapis and Her Majesty's ship Countess of Scarborough. As Jones orders to prepare for battle, the Alliance keeps its distance. It does not enter the battle for almost two hours. When it does, it fires on both ships, hitting the stern of the Bonham Richard, inflicting serious damage. When the Serapis finally surrenders, Jones transfers his command and crew to the ship and watches as the Bonham Richard sinks to a watery grave. Jones relieved Landais of his command and left him ashore in the Netherlands. Landais made his way to lay Orient, France, looking for passage back to America, where he felt he would be vindicated by a court-martial. He met Arthur Lee, an opponent of Franklin and Jones. Lee convinced Landais that neither Franklin nor Jones had the authority to strip him of his command, because he had a commission from Continental Congress. Meanwhile, the alliance was anchored in Port Le Orient, as Jones was in Paris tending the matters he felt important to the cause. Around the 12th of June, Landais reassumed command of the Alliance and set sail for America. The voyage home was rocked by Landais and his attitude. He argued with officers, locked up the head of the Marine Guard on the ship, and almost stabbed Arthur Lee for taking the first slice of a roasted pig. Everyone agreed that he must be insane, and on the 11th of August, he was forcefully removed from command by Lieutenant James Deeg in what was considered a mutiny. Continental Congress authorizes Captain John Barry to officially strip Landais of the captaincy on the Alliance. When Barry tells Landais he is no longer in command, Landais locks himself in his quarters and refuses to come out. Landais was so stubborn that Captain Barry ordered five Marines to forcefully remove him from the ship. An inquiry into the events led to Landais being discharged for conduct unbecoming an officer, while Deeg escaped the hangman's noose and was also discharged. He made his mark in the annals of history, but not the way he was expecting. His experience in the Continental Navy led to a code of conduct for naval officers that continues to this day. I'm Stephen Picks.